The base rate fallacy, how accurate tests can lead to inaccurate results. Let's explain. To explain, we're going to use the same sample of 100 people that we've been using in our other videos, 50 of whom have a disease in question, and 50 of whom do not have the disease in question. And we're going to calculate sensitivity and specificity using the same 2 by 2 table with test status in the rows and disease status in the columns. And that's going to be important to note for later. Let's say we apply the test and we get the following results. Of the people with the disease, we've correctly classified 48 of them, and 48 have tested positive. And the 50 people without the disease, 47 have tested negative. So before we do any calculations, you would know just by looking at this that this is a fairly accurate test that performs well. Let's go to the 2 by 2 table. You'll remember that in the upper left-hand corner, we have true positives. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have true negatives. Now, let's fill in the information from the results that we just saw in the picture. As you can see, sensitivity is quite high, 48 out of 50, or 0.96. And specificity is also quite good, 47 out of 50, or 0.94. And our total accuracy is very good at 95%. So this is a test that performs well. But going back to the picture, I want you to note one very important thing. Sensitivity only relates to the part of the sample or the population with, with the disease, and specificity only relates to a population without the disease. And when you do your calculations, there's no accounting for the ratio between these two populations, and that's going to have some important implications. Let's go back to the table. This was our initial calculation, and the prevalence rate was 50%, or one out of every two people. Now, we just tested a lot more people, but the prevalence rate was the same. These are what the numbers would look like. Prevalence is still 50%. But there's a lot more people in this table, but the results are the same. Sensitivity and specificity and total accuracy would work out to be the same numbers. But what happens when the prevalence rate drops from 50% to, say, 10%? So now, only 1 out of 10 people have the disease in question. And as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, that there are now a lot more false positives. Okay. The test accuracy didn't change. Sensitivity and specificity are the same. But because the ratio between the two columns has shifted, there are simply a lot more people in the upper right-hand corner. It's just a function of the math. Another way to look at this would be to be examine the positive predictive value, which is 64% or 0.64. And this means that only 64% of positive results are true positives. Now, what happens when the prevalence rate drops from 1 in 10 to 1 in 100 or 1%? Look at the upper right-hand corner now. There are far more false positives than true positives. Again, sensitivity and specificity are still quite high. It's just that the ratio between the two columns has now shifted so dramatically that we have a lot more false positives. And another way to look at this table would be to say that only 14% of positive results are true positives. So the vast majority of positive results are going to be false positives. And this is not the fault of the test. It's just a quirk of the math and the ratio between the two columns. When you evaluate a diagnostic test, often we think of the scenario on the left, where you're in a clinic, and someone is coming to you with signs and symptoms of a particular disease. If that's the case, chances are, for a lot of diseases, but not all of them, but for a lot of them, that there's a reasonable percentage chance the person may have the disease. It may not be 50, it might be lower. 
but it's often not close to 1% or even lower than that. When you take a diagnostic test and you start applying it to a population of people who are asymptomatic, now there are going to be far fewer cases. And the ratio between the two columns shifts dramatically. And once that happens, many more of the positive results that you get are actually false positives. Part of this stems from a misinterpretation of what sensitivity and specificity are. Sensitivity is the probability that you will test positive given that you have the disease. The truth is that most people interpret it as the opposite, namely the probability that you have a disease given that you've test positive, tested positive. That's not what sensitivity is. Same thing with specificity. Specificity is the probability that you will test negative given that you don't have a disease in question. And people think it's the opposite. They think it's the probability that you don't have a disease given that you've tested negative. So the take home message here is that very accurate tests when applied to a population that has a low prevalence of the disease will result in more false positives than true positives. This doesn't mean the test is inaccurate. It means we are now prisoners of the columns. And because sensitivity and specificity are calculated in the columns without regard to the ratio between the columns, that as prevalence increases, or decreases, I should say, you end up with many more false positives than true positives. And that's just a function of the ratio shifting between the columns. The accuracy of the test hasn't changed. It's just that rare diseases are hard to find. So what's the answer? Well, there's a couple of answers that might help add to the picture, namely positive predictive values, which we've already shown you, and we have a whole separate video on these as well. But the problem is positive predictive values change based on the prevalence rate. And so unless you know the prevalence for the entire population, it's really hard to calculate the positive predictive value in a way that would um, translate well from one sample to another. The other is post-test probability, which gives you the probability of having the disease given that you've tested positive. However, this requires that you know the baseline prevalence of the disease in question and use it in the calculation. So that is really hard to do. And we often don't have that information accurately. So there are a lot of compromises to be made and all we could do is consider all of the measures in total and understand what the limitations of each measure are. So I'd like to thank you for listening. Hopefully this was informative. I want to remind you that we have other longer videos on sensitivity and specificity, spin and snout, likelihood ratios, and a much more in-depth look at positive and negative predictive values. Thank you so much for listening.